so let's go into kind of the basic elements of a bullet's flight path. All right, so we have kind of a basic shallow lenticular curve out to here. This is transonic. All right, this is where it's Mach 1.2. This is where we true at. We true our muzzle velocity from here to here. All right, this is sub. This is 0.9 Mach. This is where we true our a subsonic portion of the bullet's flight path. All right, so now, a lot of people, you know, I can remember uh, going back when we were working with ballistic engines and we're trying to uh, do our truing and our DSF, BC extrapolation back in the day. They said, Todd, you can't predict what a bullet's going to do once it hits transonic shockwaves. I can understand mathematically if you're an engineer and you're saying, here's the muzzle velocity, here's the BC, and here's the density altitude. They really can't predict because it's different with each bullet how it's going to be affected by gyroscopic stability, whether you've maintained it or you've lost some, what the bullet's fixing to do. So people say, yeah, bullets tumble. Bullets don't tumble, but a bullet can uh, reach its overturning moment and flip over and fly backwards at that point. And so usually it's due to loss of gyroscopic stability. So the bullet, as it exits the barrel, it's going to go through a precession cycle, so it's moving like this a little bit, and then it's over rotation around the center axis point, and then it's going to stabilize, all right? And they, some people will say it's going to sleep. So it's going to fly. It still has a small precession cycle, but it's going to fly out and become very stable, all right? Once a bullet, if you didn't spin it fast enough, which can be reached well before trans, potentially, depends on the, the form factor of the bullet, and the amount of twist rate that you put put on it. If a bullet is actually starting to destabilize like this, and then it starts to get kind of crazy destabilized and hits transonic shock waves, it can flip over and just fly backwards. Because the weight's here, the weight is not center. All right? So as the weight goes aft, all it's going to do is flip over and fly backwards, and the nose of the bullet's going to do like this. So you're going to hear it go brrrr as it comes by you, but that's really the nose of the bullet spinning into the wind or spinning at the end of the, the, the movement of the bullet here as the rear of the bullet goes first. So bullets really don't tumble unless they hit the ground. The bullets will overturn and then go ass backwards through there. All right, so this is where we start the process out. So we're going to true our muzzle velocity out to here, and then that becomes our known. So if we true here, we'll just pick some numbers, say 800, and I have a target at 750. This is this is fine. Anywhere where in between 720 is 10% from here to here. That's optimal. All right, I could even go out and go another 10% if I wanted to and true out to here. That would be fine, although at any point in time, I'd want to go back in and recheck it as soon as I had the chance to shoot out to a distance. Even though you're perfect, getting center hits all the way from here to here, if you have a slight deviation when you go out here, you will still true and fix it, and it's not going to change your center hits coming backwards. It'll be, it'll be within the cone and fire of the weapon system itself at that point. So I can remember one of my students said, hey, we're... We, we're doing good shots all the way out to 400, but we're low at 800. I said, no, you're supposed to true at 800 and then come back. And he said, well, he said, uh, all right, we'll true at 800, but you know, then we're going to be off at four. So he trued at 800, and I just made sure I showed up about the time he had gotten through. And I said, okay, give me a 400-meter shot. And he said, all right, we're going to miss. I said, he said, we were a mil low at eight, so why are we going to be good now after we trued at eight? And I said, shoot, and he shot and he hit, but his, the deviation that he had actually moved his muzzle velocity was still inside of a minute of angle at 400. So he was within nearly 0 .1, 0 0.2 mil, still doing center shots at 400, but now he's hitting at eight. This is why we want to shoot all the way out to here because now this is where transonic shock waves can start affecting the flight path of the bullet. So at that point, we may see a disruption. Now, if you're using a custom drag model, we anticipate it to keep on that line. So if you're not, you may see a slight deviation like this. And this is the actual flight path of the bullet. So all we're doing, we're taking this red line, grabbing it and pulling it down to where it overlays on the actual flight path of the bullet. That's what truing is. That's what DSF is. We're bending the predictive algorithm to make it actually match. All right? But when we do that, it's going to maintain from here to here and stay there. So if we shot through a chronograph, it's going to give us 
1.2 is a starting point. So in your truing, if you go to view DSF, after you've already said, hey, uh, if this is 1200, we found a target at 1220 because we want to be this far or farther, and this was the impact. Now it looks at it and says, hey, this is 2% more math that we had to add. All right, so if you go to view DSF, you're going to see 1.2 if you shot through a chronograph. Right now, since we said we trued at 750, this may say 1.25, the mock speed of which I trued. Then one is the math from this point to this point, so it's a standard of math. Here we went farther than Mach 0.9, so this is going to be a 0.89, so this is a mock speed. And then 2% is 1.02, that's the numbers that you're going to see. So that tells you you did everything right and all your information is good. All right, so it, you're 2%, but you did everything good. But if you ended up seeing 1.5 and 1 and then maybe 0.93 and 0.94, this means you trued way too close. All right, you didn't go out to here. You trued at 1.5 mock speed at maybe 550 meters. This is always going to be one. 0.93 means you didn't true here, you trued somewhere in here, so it was inside. So the cone of fires may not have separated enough for you to have good resolution where your bullet actually hit. All right. But what does 0.94 mean? Well, it means you actually hit high above that. But it may be because you never had good muzzle velocity. Your muzzle velocity may be higher than you predicted it was or what you thought it was. And it's because you trued too close. So these are some of the areas that we want to stay away from. But it's really good to know what each one of these numbers mean so you can go in there and analyze potentially where your errors came from.